Directed by Spanish-born and Mexican citizen Diego Quemada Diaz, La Jaula de Oro, also known as The Golden Dream or The Golden Cage, follows the hazardous journey of three Guatemalan teenagers as they try to make their way across Mexico and into the United States. The film touches on two main complementary themes that are commonly associated with Latin American migrants heading to the United States. The first being the false and misplaced hopes and dreams that migrants have with regards to their end goal, a better life in the United States. In order to convey these themes, the film plays in a documentary-like style often placing a handheld camera on top of the trains that carry the protagonists along with many real migrants. Around 600 are credited at the end of the film. This positions the viewer as if they are a passenger on the trains themselves. But the moments in the film that convey the thematic messages with the most clarity and effect are those that stray away from reality. These surreal moments, similar to the magical realism that was born in Latin America, come in the form of a returning shot of falling snow over a black night sky. The first three scenes that include this shot have the discontinuous effect of lifting the viewer out of the hyperreal storyline. And uncoincidentally, these moments of fantasy are a reflection of the unrealistic dreams that the migrants hold in order to justify their long and perilous journey towards what they hope is freedom, but what turns out to be another kind of prison that is only further away from home. The last example of this shot of snow, placed at the very end of the film, does not break continuity like the first three, but rather serves as a confirmation of the foreshadowing they offer. All of the shots of snow are associated with Chauk, the indigenous Mayan boy who tags along with Juan and Sara at the early stage of the film. Chauk instantly stands out in the story because of the language barrier between him and the other characters. Since the film only subtitles the Spanish dialogue when necessary, the viewer is left trying to interpret Chauk's words by looking at his expressions and hand movements. Eventually, it becomes clear that Chauk is obsessed with the idea of snow, or taif in his language. This obsession is visualized through the shots of snow interspersed throughout the film. But Chauk is the only one who sees the snow, and he has difficulty communicating it to the others. This barrier between Chauk's fantasy and the reality that it is impossible for the migrants to see any snow during their trip through Central America foreshadows the impossibility of the migrants' dreams as they chug along in desperation towards a glimmer of hope in the land of prosperity. The second, but equally important, contextual element that sandwiches each returning shot of snow is the train. The train is an especially important symbol in the story of migration. According to Kumara Diaz, the inspiration for his writing came to him during his time living with a taxi driver's family by railroad tracks in Mazatlan, Mexico. There, he heard stories from the migrants who passed through on trains every day. And upon considering it for a moment, most of the film is shot on the train or near the railroad tracks as a way to emphasize the migrants unwavering dedication to move forward despite challenges. The first three scenes that include the shot of snow start and end with the train. Miren 
In this particular example, we see Chuck gently resting his hand on the rusted carcass of an old train in an almost spiritual way as he looks up towards the sky and the visuals cut to the shot of snow falling. This moment harkens back to the theme of false hopes and dreams that the migrants hold on to. A rusted old train will not carry them anywhere, and it foreshadows the failure that awaits them at the end of their journey. This example of the snow shot plus train combination highlights the theme of helplessness that plagues the migrants in the film. The shot of snow was placed after a shot of Chowk sleeping, making it appear as a dream. This once again reinforces that the migrants are holding on to a false sense of hope. Furthermore, their grave faces make it appear as if they are coming to terms with the reality that awaits them. But the great energy of the train pushes forward without pause, reinforcing the helplessness and desperation of their situation. The final element that ties these shots of snow together reinforces the themes and foreshadows the outcome of the journey is music. La Jaula de Oro is a perfect example of how a carefully placed and simple score can be used to great effect in a film. Up until around two-thirds of the way through the film, the only moments that have non-diegetic music are the scenes with the returning shot of snow. This creative choice instantly emphasizes the significance of these moments, especially given that the same simple descending piano theme is played each time. Here, the music serves as the glue that ties all the visual and thematic elements together. It is a melancholic theme that makes the pain, the struggle, and the faint glimmer of hope painfully obvious. As it should. In these moments, there is no place for trickery, as it would steal from the impact of the film's overall message. And by doing so, it would be untruthful and disrespectful to the tithe of real migrants who have made and continue to make this journey, or similar journeys. As the music fades in and the sound design fades out, it is impossible to hide from the reality that is. A reality that is based on vague dreams of a better life and on helplessness in the given situation. At the end of the film, as Juan walks home in the snow from his miserable job at an undefined location in the United States, he pauses by a streetlight to look up at the falling snow from the sky. The same returning shot of snow appears, but this time from Juan's perspective. He finally sees what Chauk was dreaming about, but instead of a hopeful dream, it is now a harsh reality. The same musical theme that the viewer has come to expect returns but this time, it is not allowed to finish. As the screen fades to black, the fantasy is broken, and the viewer is left to ponder on the reality of the situation.
for a film that tackles such a complex problem with no easy solution, La Jaula de Oro is incredibly easy to understand. And that's because it does not pretend to have the solutions to the problems it presents. Instead, the film lays out what is known as a reality for the thousands of migrants with masterful clarity for a wide audience to understand. It does so by using surreal moments to highlight the fantasy that many of these migrants cling on to during their perilous journey away from home. A fantasy that is not born from ignorance, but rather from desperation and the helpless need to hold on to something that is above reality in order to justify leaving one prison for another. <laughs>